Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London again with another watch review and today we're looking at the Patek Philippe 5980R. About four weeks ago we looked at the full rose gold bracelet version of the 5980. So the difference between that one and this one is um, obviously this one comes on a leather strap. A different deployment class for the one that's on the bracelet. Um, the dial is also different, this is brown, uh, like a brown gradient dial with a almost like a creamy silver um, sub-dial whereas the full bracelet version has a grey, a greyish black dial with a colour-coded sub-dial. Apart from that, I'm pretty certain these pieces are exactly the same. The advantage of the leather version, the one we're looking at here, is that you can tone it down. It's a much more of an understated piece compared to that full rose gold bracelet version that can almost be a little bit too much for, for certain occasions. I love the Nautilus, I think it's an amazing shape. This feels amazing on the wrist, the height of this 5980 versus like a, 59, a, a 5712 or, or a 5711. It just makes the piece feel so much more solid, much more of a sports watch. And I mentioned that as well in my other 5980 review. If you haven't seen my other 5980 review already, then go check that out because that tells you a little bit about the history of the Nautilus, how it came about, and also previous models of the Nautilus. In that previous review, I looked at all the features of the watch. Obviously, the main feature of this piece is, is chronograph, and the dial I mentioned in the previous review as well is pretty different to most chronographs that we see coming through at Bijou. Uh, this one's got, instead of three separate subdials, so your small seconds, which shows your seconds running in normal time, so your non-chronograph seconds, your chronograph minutes, so how many minutes have elapsed on the chronograph and then chronograph hours, how many hours have elapsed on the chronograph. And Patek decided to combine two of those three subdials into one large subdial at six o'clock, which we can see on the dial. So what they've done is they've combined chronograph minutes, which is what we can see on the outside ring, and chronograph hours, which is what we can see on the inside ring, into one subdial, which kind of cleans up the whole dial, makes it really simple looking and clean design like a lot of their watches. Once you get used to the way this uh, chronograph works, it, it makes sense and it looks really nice and it's super simple. Um, but it's not as easy to read as a, as a three subdial uh, chronograph like the Daytona or Royal Oak. I personally prefer the three subdials because it's much easier to read. You can, set, you, know, you can separate out each bit of data that you're looking for, how many minutes have passed, instead of having to search into that dial, look, look into the dial and see whether it's passed through two, two times. And that's something that I mentioned in the previous review is that outer subdial, the one that takes care of the uh, chronograph minutes, isn't just one subdial from zero to 60 minutes. It passes around twice. The larger numbers on that outer subdial show your first 30 minutes on the chronograph. The inner numbers on that outer ring are red and they show you your second 30 minutes of your chronograph minutes. And then that very inner dial, which is the dark brown one, shows you your chronograph hours and that's from 0 to 12. Another thing that I'm not a massive fan of on this piece is the way you change the date. It's a little bit cumbersome because on a usual watch you turn the crown and then you get a different date on the window. However, on this watch you have to use a small pusher on the left hand side of the watch and you have to push it in and then cycle through the, the days like that. A disadvantage is really that you have to find something that's not going to damage the watch through so a toothpick or, or something like that is quite good. Um, but it means that you're not always able to, to change the date when you need it because you might not have the right tool to do it there. Not everyone carries around the little Patek pusher. I love the dial on this piece, I think the brown is amazing. But however, I do prefer the grey dial that is on the bracelet version we looked at a couple of weeks ago. The same as the bracelet one, this has like a gradient dial, so it's really light in the center and then fades out to a much darker color in the edges. And that brown dial ties in really nicely with that rich brown leather. Another thing that I find a little bit annoying about the strap Nautiluses is that in order to change the strap position, so make it smaller or bigger, you have to unscrew the clasp in order to, to change the position and then screw it back in again. However, the rest of the clasp is amazing. It feels so nice. You've got those two little pushes on the side of the, uh, the clasp that allows you to open up the mechanism and then undo the watch. The rose gold color, again, amazing. It looks stunning, really glows, and uh, it's, it's very different to the Rolex uh, rose gold. And maybe partly to do with the fact that they use a brushed finish a lot of, on a lot of this watch. And that looks really nice, I think. 
I love the bubble effect plot that connects the strap to the watch. It looks really cool. It's not quite as bright as something like a, a day date that really, really shines off light. And this is much more subtle, I think. It's much more toned down. It's got a glow rather than like a sheen. And I think that's a really nice thing about the Pateks. They're not usually very flashy or, or shiny. They're usually much more toned down. And, and that really goes with the philosophy of the brand and, and definitely the clients that we get. We tend to have much more um, older people buying the Pateks and, and that kind of shows through. They prefer that more subtle look. For me, that's why I think that this works better than the bracelet version. It's because I think Patek is all about subtlety and discreet wealth. And I think the bracelet is a little bit too much for every day and maybe just a little bit too in your face. Um, it's a stunning piece and the bracelet's an absolute work of art and I love, love, love that watch. Would I own this watch? 100%. But it's very expensive compared to what you could buy from Rolex or AP. This is double the price of a Royal Oak Chronograph Rose Gold and I'm not sure if I think it's fully worth that massive, massive difference. For the same price as this, you could have a Royal Oak Chronograph in Rose Gold and maybe a Day Date or a Daytona in Rose Gold as well for the same price. And that's where I think that it's, you're really looking at an elite client here, someone um, who's not so bothered about the price tag, who just really, really loves the brand and wants to keep it simple, classy and subtle. Don't forget to sign up to The Watch Room for all our updated prices and pieces available. Thank you so much guys for watching and let me know what other watches you want to see. We've got loads more watches coming, uh, so stay tuned.